Hey guys, um, this is Robert Fergalario again. It's been a while since I did the uh, Storm Crossing videos. Um, this question has actually been asked uh, a few times for over a year now. And I just haven't been able to make a video, but here it is. Um, making one. So the question is... Is any school that I can suggest for them to go to? Honestly, I do not have a very good experience with the school that I went to. So I cannot really refer them and I don't really want to refer them. And since I do not have personal experience with our school, I cannot refer them myself. But when selecting a school, there's um, some characteristic of the school that you must uh, look into. And I'm going to give you that um, information throughout this video. So now I just I just want to give you guys an update that um, I'm working on my triple crown. Um, right now I have certification on uh, a star processing technician. I also took uh, the test and I'm, I'm and I'm certified endoscopic core processor and instrument specialist. I'm currently working on my CHL, which I probably do in the next uh, few weeks or months. And um, I see there's some people that makes video regarding, you know, not going to school. Uh, you don't have to go to school to be a star processing. But there's a reason why I do not suggest doing a self-study for some reasons, which we're going to go through in this video. Uh, not going through school or doing just buying a book and do self-study could probably save you some money will it really save you some money if um you cannot even get a job you know but i'm not saying that um if you just do self-study you're not gonna get a job some people are lucky enough but it takes a lot of uh, luck because even people that went to school and have um externships have a hard time on getting a job so one thing you have to ask yourself um, what kind of learner are you are you a person who could uh, learn just through reading or do you need an instructor in front of you um, who actually teaches you some people could learn just through reading um, me i personally prefer an actual uh, classroom than doing an online class because usually taking an, on, uh, an online class gets me dis distracted uh, so easy. I'm actually a uh, audio learner and uh, also visual but um, yeah so I prefer uh, going to a class and uh, listening and um, when, I'm, when I was actually taking my board for nursing I was actually is studying only through this audio, audio re reviewer so i do prefer a class but it's up to you um because sometimes um going on uh on a s class or to school is could be hard because of your uh, schedule maybe at work or maybe uh, the school available for your area is farther or there's no no school uh closer to your area then online class could be best uh, suits for you. Would taking online class be more efficient or would it be more convenient? What would you choose between convenience and efficiency? Um, meaning to say is, would you learn better if you go to, to a class even though you have to drive farther? Or um, would you be okay, you know, um, just doing online class because it's more uh, convenient for you? Um, but it's if it's le less efficient, then you have to to have that as a factor on making decision on selecting uh, what what mode of um, studying you would take. Uh, schools actually give you multiple schedules. Um, some of them will let you go uh, full time uh, or part time. I think full time is five days a week, about five hours a day, uh, Monday through Friday. And part time would be two times a week or two days, Saturday, Sunday. So whichever works your schedule, um, you sh you should take it. Um, when I was doing my uh, my class, um, I was actually doing two full time jobs back then, and my day off was Tuesday and Thursday, and I would go to school on Tues on Tuesdays and Thursday, and that's how I did mine.
So just, uh, yeah, whatever works with you. So the class takes about um, 10 weeks theory. So the classroom would take 10 weeks. Um, if you're going to do online class, I think uh, you have your own time. I'm not sure exactly. I, would, I wouldn't prefer myself doing online because like what I said, I prefer uh, being in the class. I think I would learn more if I were you uh, if, in, in the class because there's actually just an actual teacher you could ask if you have questions or other classmate that could be um, could also help you. Um, so the class uh, takes about 10 weeks. I did it uh, 10 weeks. It was only part time, so it could be faster. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure with that, but uh, mine it, it, it took me um, 10 weeks. The clinical would be uh, 10 weeks as well, but it's going to be full-time. Uh, full-time meaning to say this is 8 hours clinical, 8 hours a day, uh, 5 times a week, 40, hour, 40 hours a week for the next uh, two and a half months or 10 weeks. Um, sometimes you have to drive a little farther than your city where you live at, but uh, having a clinical is very important. So when selecting a school, that's one thing, one very important thing you have to ask or find out about the school. Do they offer clinical? If they say, yeah, we do have clinical, uh, we do it in school. After, you, after your theory, we're going to do a clinical. That's not what I meant. What I meant with clinical is the externship that the school should offer. Uh, they should have an, an affiliation with the uh, hospitals or a clinic but hospitals is a have more a better chance for you to uh, get hired um, after your uh, clinical as long as it depends on your um, performance so the school have to have that uh, clinical uh, affiliation with the hospital if they don't it's gonna be hard for you to get a job and even though you have a clinical background if you don't work hard and you don't show the people that you're um, uh, worthy enough to get hired it's gonna be hard, hard for you because you really have to work you really have to give your best you know um, give your best for you to be able to get hired within your um, externship um, facility where, where you do ex your externship and you you want to give them a reason the only reason why they won't hire you is because they're not hiring Otherwise, if if you didn't get hired within and you're going to keep looking for a job because you're going to need someone to refer you, right? And then if no one would refer you if you're not doing good and you're clinical and it's going to be hard for you, even with the agency, it's going to be hard for you. Um, so most hospitals would hire only people with experience, paid experience. So after school, um, and even while you do your clinical, it's best to uh, contact you know some agencies um, if they're hiring a new grads. New grads meaning you, you have your certification and you have your clinical hours. You have to keep applying already um, when you're almost done with your clinical, so that way um, they're familiar with you. Um, it's easier for you to find a job. And when you're, look, when you're looking for a job in the hospital, don't apply on those benefited positions. The only thing you could apply to is um, those on calls, per DMs, because big hospitals won't hire you because you don't have much experience yet. Your best chance is your clinical site would hire you or apply through agency. Uh, but through agency, they will definitely pay you less. Um, than a hospital would pay you directly but um, being higher in your clinical place is depending on your performance and I know this because I I know uh, a few people a lot of people actually that um, failed um, that uh, clinical not really you don't really fail fail but what I meant is when you went if you don't satisfy you know the people that you work with it's it's gonna be hard for you after your clinical and let's say you try to apply through agency but they don't have no opening yet then 
uh, try to ask your uh, clinical site if you can do some volunteering. If if you are uh, still free, you know, uh, if you have time to volunteer, do it. I would say do it, because that way that would make let them know that you're really eager. You really wanted to work in that place, and you really wanted to learn. But if you're if you're out of the place as soon as you finish, then you're just another. You're just gonna be just. You're just gonna be another student. And um, it's always nice to be occupied because you can put that on your resume that you that say you you did you did your ten weeks and just stayed for um, another two two weeks. So ten uh, twelve weeks is better than ten weeks of of experience. Try to volunteer if you can. Another benefit of um, going to uh, to a, a class or to a school. Uh, instead of self-study is uh, school usually have an outlined study materials and to be honest with you guys when I was in school um, I didn't really learn so much in a class um, so what, whatever program you go to if it's a vocational if it's a private it's just gonna be self-study as well but um, the only pro is there's a teacher you could ask if you have questions but uh, one of the benefit of going to a school, they're gonna have um an out outlined materials, which would really help you because all the uh all the important information that you need to pass the test will be there. So this is what it start would would becoming a slow processing. This is the step. You you find a school. You, you take the school and don't worry about nothing except getting enough information to pass the exam. Meaning to say is your, your goal in going to school, your first goal is to have enough information to have license, start processing license. And then once you get license, you go to a clinical. And then your goal in, in a clinical place is to learn how it's done uh, in real life. You have to, you have to, um, you have to to see how it's it's done, because it could be different from the book, but um, and on on the on clinical, you're gonna see people not doing the right thing. Um, don't be so like, oh, this is that's not how it's supposed to be done. Do not forget that you're a student and they're the worker. But it's always safe to say, um, is is this is this correct or is this wrong? and um you um so you're not being you know um you should you shouldn't know more than the actual worker that's what i'm trying to say because you will have a bad uh bad characteristic so you know in instead of uh, like like for me if i'm going to refer i cannot refer you if you're gonna act like you're smarter than me but you can always correct me you always you always have to do the right thing you always have, if you think the person training you is doing wrong, then you have to, you have to ask, um, is that, is that right? Or is this right? So make a suggestion, but don't tell them what to do because that could be, um, annoying, you know, it's annoying to train someone who knows more than you or who thinks knows more than you. For the tuition, uh, tuition fee, find what's included on the tuition. That's, uh, um, uniform, uh, in it, uniform, uh, books, all the study materials, the exam fees, so that way you could budget your um, your your finance. You know, um, it's not as much as going for LVN, but you know it still costs a few thousand dollars of your savings of hard, or of your hard earned money. So make sure you uh, you know what's your you you can budget your expenses, and of course make it worth it. And there is only two uh, certification board that I know of. Uh, one is C CBSPD, and one is um, ISHAM, which is also known or known right now as HSPA. HSPA is the new name for ISHAM. So majority, um, I don't know if some school lets you pick which one, but when I went when I went to school, I I was offered CBSPD certification. 
Um, the difference between them two, uh, CBSPD lasts longer. Uh, they last uh, five years. But to renew it, um, you would need 100 hours. Um, the other one is uh, HSPA or ASIM. That is uh, renewed annually, but you would only need uh, 12 uh, CEUs. So what I did with mine was I took this, I took the uh, CBSPD first. And then after five years, I switched to Isham. I just didn't renew the CBSPD and I just challenged the uh, uh, Isham uh, certification exam. And the website for the HSPA is uh, www.myhspa.org. Uh, HSPA stands for Healthcare Star Processing Association. And the website for the CBSPD is www cbspd.net if you have some question or you need some help you can uh, comment down below and shoot me an email i could be your personal uh, clinical consultant or mentor um, i do not specialize in the theory part but i could definitely help you with the clinical part um, like if you have question what to expect uh, before your clinical or if you have question regarding during clinical or even after clinical so just let me know I can also do a resume review. I can review your resume if you want before you submit it to um, to whatever agency you're applying to. And I often get a, an offer as well through agency. I can also refer you to that. Um, if you if you want to use my service, then you can have me. Um, I can help you with that. Um, you can have my cell phone number, my email address, and I will be there for you. Uh, whenever you need me uh, for as long as you get your your job okay guys um i hope this helps you guys a little bit or if this has answered questions of which one which school should i take and what is the importance of going to school and selecting the right school for you if you have any question please comment down below or shoot me an email i also want to show you guys this is my uh, my cis certification uh can you see it uh, so this is from hspa says uh certified instrument specialist and here's my other license from my uh like uh, vocational nursing license and um it's actually expiring this year i'm trying to work on uh, renewing it so you know because it's always nice to have another certification just in case um i needed one you know it's always nice to have plan a b c i thank you guys for watching if you guys still are watching this please comment down below if you what you guys think of this that would help me a lot and please like this video and subscribe to help me grow this channel once again thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next video you want the best of my heart, you just